It's nearly two o'clock, so maybe we should begin. Um, first, before introducing the panelists uh, of this afternoon, I wanted to thank Bernadette. Why? Because, as Bernadette say, I co I'm co-heading a, a new research team uh, studying Asia, and our scientific line is trans transdisciplinary line and a comparative transaerial line. And actually, Bernadette, you're doing that for decades here in this university, and you have always been always well intentioned with us, always supporting our project, giving us advices for years, and we are very pleased to collaborate to your event. And um, actually, we're on the same scientific line. As I see, there researchers, specialists from all the disciplines uh, human sciences can provide. And we are working on different areas, and I think it's very interesting approach allowing us to deepen each other analysis. So thank you very much for this event, uh, Bernadette. Thank you to you. You're welcome. Um, so we're going to start this afternoon with a presentation um, of uh, Rosita. Uh, excuse me, Rosita, I'm looking for my uh, little paper. Uh, you're belonging to the European Federation for Freedom of Belief, and you're going to give us a presentation talking about and presenting us uh, the Orthodox uh, Church, and especially the role of the famous Patriarch Kriyeril, and uh, maybe we'll talk about the links between uh, the President Putin regime and uh, his position on the Ukraine uh, issue. I give you the floor for uh, 20 minutes, Bernadette. We 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 well, 20 minutes and question. Minutes and then we have questions. 10 minutes question. Yeah. All the, all the talks will be talking about different subjects. Yeah. It's best if we have the, the question, question just after the talk. Yeah. So 20 minutes and then 20 minutes, uh, uh, 10 minutes uh, questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it works, right? Yes. You hear me? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I will hope that you will not be asleep after the, the lunch. And um, the interesting part is that um, I had a speech prepared for my presentation today, and I feel that they cannot really rely on it. And uh, the biggest problem is that, um, that what we see, what is happening in Ukraine, around Ukraine, is, is, that that is, is something that is really um, so, is changing so much that is like the speech that I was like, because I already did many times about uh, um, how, about Russian society, uh, how the, the, the government of Putin is connected uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Patriarch Kirill, how the Russian Orthodox Church is, is the part and parcel of the, of the, of the apparatus of, of Russia. And I feel that this, all these things is slightly the, um, already old that what we see is, is not exactly what I was analyzing some years ago or even before the, the January, uh, February 24, that uh, uh, Patriarch Kirill is, is, is totally the, the part, integrated part of the apparatus is, was known before the war and is certainly now, so it's nothing new. But what my accent before speaking about Russia and trying to, to like explain the, the mentality, Russian mentality, it was based on the, on the assumption that there were two Russians always, two Russias always. The one Russia is the proletarian, which was always very much attached to the Soviet past. Uh, and it comes from, from the, the very long ages since the, 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 the Peter the Great. But always it was the white Russia, I called white, the intelligent people, uh, intelligentsia, the, the, the well-educated, the people with the very liberal and uh, democratic and, uh, and westernized way of seeing the world. But the problem is that now, when they look at what is going on, and, and that's why my speech that they had before is not really working because 
there is something that we see completely new, and it takes time to internalize how new it is, and uh, and understand what exactly Russian people are. Uh, that we still see the people going to West to have uh, nice holidays, buy the expensive goods. Uh, we don't know exactly what they think. And the uh, recent even statement of the opposition, Russian opposition, we believe that is like a mentality closer to ours. The statements are not really showing that they are on our side. And, uh, and that the, the people that I was calling intelligentsia, this, this is really bright people, what I hear mostly now is, please don't speak about the politics. Or there are very few people who are abroad, and they, they perhaps they think like us, and we can communicate in, in the same and the same level with us. <laughs> but there are so many, there are very little, and I don't really hear and see a lot of things that I, I really can rely and and, and say because the, the most the biggest line is either you have the, the 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 big part of Russians which are supporting the war. And another part, which saying, I don't want to talk to politics. And that is something that is really changing very deeply. And uh, for me, it's like I cannot make the conclusions. I'm in the process of processing myself. And I cannot give you the conclusions because I don't have it yet. Because we are in the process of the war, and we are in the process of, of uh, observing. And also, it's, I believe the society itself is in a way, is also in a way, in a moment of transformation. Because, because it's not only for us as a soul searching, but it's also for every individual inside of Russia or outside of Russia. It's also it's a process of internalizing and taking the position and, and, and deciding who they are. And I believe this now is a very complicated moment where it's difficult to really to, to conclude and, uh, and, and to say what it is. And, and my old beliefs, pre-war pre beliefs, that there are two Russian societies living in one country, I'm not sure it works anymore. And that is the, that's why my speech is completely, you see, and then they did something else and etc. And the interesting part is, because we had today discussion also at the table, is, is the introduction of myself is that I was born and educated in Soviet Union because I'm Lithuanian and uh, my diploma is still a Soviet diploma. It was the last diploma, Soviet diploma, because I finished my university in 88. So, and, uh, and uh, I have from my own personal experience the old the Soviet life that somebody is saying how good it was because they lived on, on my own. And, uh, and also the people, they were very close to me. And the interesting part is at that time, we didn't have the internet. At that time, we just had the same as that, meaning the people would uh, print the small uh, booklets or, or books in a, in a, in a way uh, like that nobody will find out and we will share the small things and we would read and we would think and then we don't trust what we hear and we understand that there are two parallel realities going on one is the real reality and the one that is told we are told by the by the media by the school or university communist party so it's like you live in this world and you somehow manage to keep the the, the mind and uh, to understand what is true and what is wrong, what is lie and what is the truth. And uh, today say that uh, Russian society is completely brainwashed, you cannot say it because it, uh, it's impossible. It's, uh, it's again, it's the same situation. If you at least sit and think, you cannot come to the conclusion that uh, the, the uh, Ukrainians are fascists, or Lithuanians are fascists, or French, you should be fascists. So it's like uh, what the fascist is, in fact. And, uh, and the point that now to be so blind and, and just say yes to the war, yes to the killing of, of, of the Ukrainians, is something is not entirely that we can understand. And as a, as a Parallel example I can give is Belarusian society, 
which is under Lukashenko, under strong control and brainwash continuously for how many years? 30 years, more than 30 years, right? And when they talk to the, to the Belarusian people, and we see also with the involvement with the war, they completely understand what is going on. And they completely refuse to go to the war. And they do even the, the destruction of the infrastructure inside of Belarus. And people, by the way, they are arrested continuously every single day in Belarus. We don't hear is the same situation. You don't hear much. People are afraid to write because everything is 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 sur under surveillance. And still, the the this light inside that for justice for the for for better life and against the 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 the, the, the violence is so strong that you cannot do anything. And people would risk their lives, and they know that it's like. Uh, the arrest is going every single day. They just come to, to, and they pick the person, and they put in jail. And in jail, they don't get out. They invite for tea. Even they don't invite for tea. It's more brutal than this. So to say that Russians are afraid of, of the, is, is difficult. And, uh, and there is, uh, what they, my conclusion is like, because I'm, I'm sorry that I'm not a little very consistent, because the problem is that they said this, like I am internalizing and, uh, and analyzing and thinking, and they cannot really give you the clear answer. But one of the answers of mine is that since centuries, um, it was this very important uh, part of the Russian mentality, which is, in Russian, they were saying, Rus those who speak Russian, they should understand, which in translation would mean um, Russians are beaten, meaning the Russians are attacked. And I believe it's very part of the, of the Russian mentality is that they are not understood or well perceived abroad, and, and that's somehow they are detested and somehow they are attacked, so, and they are not, not fine with it. That is one line, and I believe now what is happening is that uh, this outrage against the war is really provoked a lot of this feeling that Rus Ruskich Byut, that Russians are beaten, so sort of attacked, and in fact, in a way it is, but but you don't look for the reason why. It's like you don't take the blame on, on, on yourself that there is something wrong, that you did something wrong. But this, again, immediately, this program, Ruskich Byut, is immediately is on, and people are under defense. And when they are under defense, they immediately, like, you know, they agree with the things they hear, or they, they, they justify the things uh, they, they know. Another, another possible version of why they are supporting so, so strongly the, um, the government's action and the war is uh, that somehow Russians, the government, the, 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 including the, the, the role of, uh, of the Russian Orthodox Church and the, the Patriarch Kirill, they succeeded somehow to mix those two things, which is government and the country. So, but when, because when they talk to Russians, in particular after 2014, when they, they annexed Crimea, they started to have the problems with Ukraine and etc. It's like, and when they are justifying very blindly, people who live abroad, it's not, I'm not talking to Russians even inside of Russia, I'm talking to people who live like for 30 years in, U, in, in US. And they should already understand something, how the West is functioning. And I said, how you can justify this blind propaganda? The answer was, I love my country. And then I say, I love my country. But they can criticize my president. I can criticize my government. I can criticize the parties who make the, the stupid, idiotic things. But I love my country. So it's not like, it's not uh, like, Two things, it's like you cannot divide. And it seems that now it's exactly those two things, they are totally interlinked, and you cannot like take away. If we criticize that the government or Putin is doing the horrible crimes, for them they went they go immediately under defense by saying that is is somebody else is guilty. We are fine. 
And also for the people who are, I considered very smart and educated, and they sit and they, and they contemplate by saying, but we don't want to be, the, it's good that it's going this way, that we are separating from the West, it's good, because we don't want to be the colony of, of the West, of the Americans. So also it's like, uh, I don't know, I don't feel Lithuanian being uh, a colony of uh, Americans. Perhaps they would like even say, please, Americans, come protect me from, from somebody. Because, and they, do, they don't come. They say, you should be like somehow make the effort. And say, oh, oh, France, are you a colony of somebody? Or you are colonizing other people? So it's like even this perception of that West is like uh, doing something that is... Uh, is making people uh, colonial and the Russians, they are defending their freedom, their identity, their traditional values, they say. And it works very well, some of these, uh, these things, they, they work very well in the West, they understand, for some people, which is very sad, in fact. So, and, um, so I, I repeat again my, my, my thing, that is, I'm not at the end of my thinking or my research, because it's something that is, is still in the progress until the war goes on and uh, goes on and we are changing and they are changing and Ukrainians may be changing. So it's like so, ma so many puzzle pieces are in the process of, of moving and we cannot exactly say what is going on. That Russian society I am deceived, and uh, I believe many intellectuals, even Russian intellectuals, they are also deceived because they say how it come that in Soviet time we were much more open, understanding, and we can be so blind today. And, uh, and my conclusion is, because in my other conferences they talk about the, the religious uh, a religious component in, in all this propaganda work that is going on right now. So I worked, uh, work, uh, I'm talked in uh, different uh, conferences about how uh, some people, they try to make the, the guilty part, the, the, the religions they call uh, foreign religions. And this is Jehovah's Witnesses Scientology. Now to the blacklist, they started to add also neo-pagans. So saying that uh, it's not Russia that is attacking somebody, but it's the Americans and the Westerners through the secret services, they working through the sleeping cells inside of the Russia. And these sleeping cells are Jehovah's Witnesses. And that is from one side with the famous uh, lawyer. It's an interview with famous lawyer. He was really explaining to the Russian public how Jehovah's Witnesses, you see this, is Jehovah's Witness, is the person who is like a person, but in fact is, the, is somebody who is the, the, the mastermind or the, 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 just the instrument of the American CAA and, um, and the secret services. So that these people are just evil and they hang Ukrainian children. They eat, they, they teach how to, kill and eat Russian children. So the, 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 this uh, propaganda is just like, uh, I don't know what the word to use for it. So, and also to attribute that uh, Yehoshua's witnesses who are not really uh, people who are very active politically, that suddenly they are uh, making the uh, the project to overthrow the Russian government is, is, very, is very paradoxical. And, uh, and uh, this famous lawyer was saying that uh, when Russian troops, they enter Ukraine, they see the hanged children. And uh, meaning that Russians are good and they just uh, liberate from the evil Ukraine and evil, evil West, the, um, the poor uh, Ukrainians who were confused. So where it goes, we don't know, as they say, is, uh, is something that is, uh, for me, it's even painful to observe. And, um, 
because they have my even friends in Ukraine. They, some of my friends are in uh, Kharkov. So they decided to stay under the bombs and destruction. And uh, they just came to Lithuania last week. I spent with them one week. And to see these people destroyed from inside, and then know that there are people who can easily justify uh, what they are doing is, is very difficult. So my, my, really, my speech is not really, it's not, um, it's not scholarly at all. It's more on advocacy side because my organization is more, it's like we work on advocacy. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry if I offended somebody, but um, no, it may be somebody who is, you know, on a different. I always want, yeah, but would like to discuss somebody who is of different opinion because it's like. <laughs> no, I think your analysis was very scientific because you explained the difficulties to analyze this, and because the context makes it difficult to analyze it, yeah. and so. Um, you haven't taken any risk uh, and supporting things that are not. Or okay, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, very much, Rosita. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so. Can, can you translate what's uh, on top? Have you the uh, do not believe the uh, uh, timidity? If they, their uh, kindness or the, the oh. niceness, because uh, uh, because it doesn't go from the heart, from the soul. Okay. So it's, it's That's the way. How is the Jehovah's Witness? He is the tra traitor of the of the of the Rodina um, Patri. Uh, and he is a spy. So that is the the major because it's it's a it's an interview with the with the with the in Russia known famous uh, lawyer. Okay. Lawyer? No, it's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. So when that is the 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 like the the visual mm -hmm. message of the interview. Well, it looks like during the Cold War, what the Russians Oh, it's nothing would be changing. Doing, or what the Americans would be doing about the communists. Yes, it's the same thing. Only you change the, the yeah. it works the, the same. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it conjures up uh, anti-Semitism protocols yeah, use of the, the mic. Use the mic. There is only one. That's why yeah, you should, should share yeah. that. Uh, looking at that picture, uh, the image conjures up for me um, the anti-Semitism and, and the protocols of the elders of Zion. That's what I thought immediately when I saw it. Thank you. The spies and the, and the traitors of, the, of your birth country. Rodina is birth country. Yeah, birth country, right? Because in English I don't find the other word, birth country. Because it's not like... Uh, just your country, but it's like your, the blood of yours. It's nativism. <laughs> so thank you very much. Are there any questions in the audience? Maybe I have one. Somebody wants to challenge me. <laughs> <no>? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I have a question waiting for other one. Um, so we, we, when f f the researcher working on China have, have the same difficulties to, to analyze the public opinion. Uh, so with the problem in authoritarian states when people cannot, where there are no free medias or... But I heard that in Russia there are some opinion pools. Some of those pools are totally controlled by the state and the, the, the questions. Um, uh, Sometimes the way you, you answer the question makes you uh, answer uh, and following the, um, the regime line. But I heard there, um, there are some pools who are quite open. Uh, uh, are there a tool helping researchers to analyze? Do, do, do they give any uh, clues to, to, to have a better understanding of those Russians who, who sometimes auto-censor uh, themselves? Or? Uh, 
inside this, uh, inside, from inside of Russia, it's very difficult. So it's like we don't expect to be like the free thinking people. But uh, but those who moved outside, they have the the, the blogs and etc. So there are interesting things. But but what I'm saying that even these people, because I'm not talking already about the people who are in love and they 100% support the, the 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 government. I'm talking the people already who are, who I was calling and many people were calling the. The, the 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 intellectuals, the the people like liberals, that even those people are here in the in the they they say many, many beautiful things and many right things and etc. But is even in these people I heard this that we don't want that is in a way it's good because we don't want to be what we want to be a colony of the Western world, but they live in the Western world. They run to the Western world. They, they, with, the, with all like uh, prohibition to have the planes to uh, to the Western Europe, so they use the the Emirates airlines, and they come in masses because Emirates provide just the big planes for Russians to come to Italy, to France, and to have the holidays. And at the same time, they don't want to be the colony; they are defending stuff, and that's what it is for me. Very deep. Uh, thing that is like really like took the ground from my feet that I, that now I am hanging in the air and thinking that even these people that I respected so much and I'm not sure what exactly they are thinking because it's like if you take that the Putin's wife uh, is living in the Switzerland and the, the love of the everybody is is here only the only change that we have that now they are very quiet and they try to speak the foreign languages. <laughs> but like, uh, like I was uh, a week ago, I was in Lithuania, in Vilnius, in the evening, because I am like a tourist, uh, I don't live there anymore. In the evening, you, mostly you hear the Russian-speaking people. And you don't know. It may be Ukrainians, it may be Belarusians, because we have a lot of Belarusian refugees, and it may be Russians. And these people, they live in the, in the center, so when this Russian, this lo really Russian-speaking city became. And you don't know. It's like you can try to attack, you can try to live, because it's like I was re sitting once in the, in the restaurant, and uh, it was a group of people uh, next to me, and I was a little bit like over, over listening what they are talking, and it was the Belarusians who were talking about how they were organizing the demonstrations. All the tactics they were using, I say, voila. And they speak Russian. So we don't know. And, uh, and the Russians, they nicely live uh, in France a lot, in Italy a lot. So it's, uh, it's, it's, very, it's very strange feeling because it's, uh, you know, it's not that it's like only the, those who are like in the streets, they say, yes, Russia, yes. But it's also this other thing. I see what you mean, yeah. I have a question in French because I haven't practiced okay. English for years. I understand, but don't, don't speak. Yeah. Uh, Je comprends. Uh, C'est ce que m'a dit Bernadette. Um, Je m'interroge sur uh, la religion, justement, et le, le patriarche. Si j'ai bien compris, il y a deux patriarches orthodoxes, un à Kiev et un à Moscou. Et celui de Moscou soutient Poutine uh, complètement. Et j'ai du mal à, à, à comprendre qu'un chrétien puisse... Euh, et avec ses, mais je connais, je, je sais juste qu'il y a deux patriarches, la scission, je ne sais pas trop pourquoi. Enfin voilà, ma question est sur l'articulation avec la religion orthodoxe. Um, malheureusement, um, um, unfortunately, perhaps I should have talked about And this. Ah. Well, the question is, uh, there are two patriarchs in Russia, one in, Kiev, in, one in Kiev, one in Moscow. What is the, uh, and what is the link between the two of them? And also, what is the link between Putin and what's going on? And how can Christians support the war? Um, in Russia, there is only one patriarch. And he is, as I said, he is, uh, is absolutely, it's like a entirely integrated into the regime. He's uh, uh, more pope than the, like the, the, he's more aggressive perhaps sometimes than even the, the, what Putin is saying. And, uh, and this is like, that was my speech, but I decided not to rely on it. But, uh, but uh, 
the the fact that is the alliance I was like laughing ironically holy alliance is not only for the for the like for the belief uh, for the spirituality even though they say that Putin is a very spiritual person but it's is a lot about the the economical influence because now the 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 Russian Orthodox Church and Patriarch Kirill himself they are very much um, how to say uh, it's one of the of the powers economical <coughs> powers in Russia at least it was before the war and uh, and uh, all the privileges they get in because they don't pay the, the taxes uh, they they have the 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 very close relationship they had again it's everything in the past because they may, may be changing so it's like they had the, the, the relationship with the, with the oligarchs and etc. And they hold the really economic power. And the, through this economic power, they still want to keep the, the, the uh, to keep this spiritual language, which people already like for, for even before the war. So they were they, they don't go anymore to the churches in Russia. Because they, they, they build the churches continuously, and the churches are empty because people, they feel that it's not sincere, that all this conversation is not true. And then there is another, another patriarch in Ukraine, and, uh, and uh, as you know, that Ukrainian uh, church has split. There are, there are churches, there are places which stayed with the, with the Russian patriarchate, and there, is, uh, there, are, there are churches... Uh, uh, which belong to the Ukrainian, they separated. They went to the to the um, uh, Constantinople. Thank you. So and uh, but it's also it's it's quite a delicate because I try to inquire with the, my Ukrainian friends. This is is like uh, that is again it's not white and black anymore, because it may be that the Russian Church was was fighting the the Russian invasion. No, I mean the the, the churches which are with Russian patriarchate. They were fighting uh, the Russian invasion equally as the as the the, uh, the the Ukrainian church, so it's like uh, it's it's not uh, it's it's very um <laughs> and the Ukrainian people is also is like uh, sometimes those who were in favor of Russian before the war they became very much anti-Russians, but there are people who were in favor of Ukraine before and now they are anti-Ukrainians. So it's like uh, I'm telling. It's it's is the sand moving? Is is there is nothing to really like to rely on? And saying, oh, that is the way it is, because the things are progressing, and it's interesting to see how the pro-Ukrainian Ukrainians became pro-Russians, because something happened. Some some during the the war, the the atrocities, something happened. They were deceived, and they. So it's 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 very interesting moment that we live. And uh, is to see is to see how the things will develop, and also if the work will continue for long. I don't know. For us, it's the same. It's like we support Ukraine, but for how long we will be patient enough to support? Right? It's it's, it's a good question. And uh, the gas uh, will go up, the electricity will go up. Will we say that we sacrificed ourselves for Ukraine? It's, we don't know, right? Today we say is is that's how we perceive, but how it will be tomorrow? Thank you very much, Rosita. You were really helping us to see how things are complex and moving. And um, that's thank you very much.